Okay, so hi, my name is Marcia and I'm here on behalf of Jelly Arts. And today we are going to monoprint with the uh, Jelly Arts gel printing plate um, using stamps. So we are going to start right away because I have a lot to cover. So this is the Jelly Arts gel printing plate. This is the five by seven plate. And it's made out of a special kind of plastic. Um, there's no silicone, there's no latex in there. It's non-toxic, uh, non-toxic. And it's made um, in the US. Um, so this is the five by seven one. And this is what the um, packaging looks like, looks like. And Michaels also has the eight by 10 in stores. Um, you can use whichever one you want. I'm going to use this one today. And um, what else have I got? I've got a brayer here. And I've got um, some paints that I will show you when I use them. And then I will try to remember to tell you what the colors are. Um, I also have some paper here. This is the paper that I, I'm going to be printing on. It's um, cardstock paper and it's four and a half by six and a half inches. And that means that it fits perfectly on the plate. Um, let's put this away. And then I have prepared some samples and these are just pieces of um, this paper that I printed on and then I um, yeah, just adhered pieces of the prints on the cards. Um, and um, I adhere them to the, these card bases and the card bases are from this pack. This is a value pack of recollections, um, cards and envelopes and the cards are five by six and a half inches. And they are, yeah, okay, like this. So I just um, glued the uh, prints on top of this and if I get round to it I will show you how I did it but I'm sure that you can understand how I did this. Um, what, else, what else? What else? What else? Oh yeah I have a damp cloth here um, for cleaning my plate you can also use a baby wipe to clean this and um, for cleaning stamping ink off the plate, I have something special that will, will come around to when I need to clean the plates. Um, and yes, stamps, of course. Now, there are a lot of different stamps. Um, these might uh, look familiar. These are really old ones, but these are the old fashioned um, wood mounted uh, stamps. Um, and um, I would never use these stamps with paint. So while I use paint all the time on my gel uh, printing plate, um, I would not use paint on these stamps because it would be hard to clean them, right? Um, so if you have stamps like this at home of, or if you find a beautiful stamp, a stamp at Michael's that you want to use on your gel printing plate, you can, just not, I wouldn't recommend using it with paint. So what you can do instead is use some stamping ink. And I've got several kinds here. I've got some Versafine Clear, Claire. I've got some archival ink, that's a permanent ink. I've got some stays on and I've got these distress oxides. And I think I will start with the distress oxide. So the distress oxides are um, a fusion ink. That's what they call it. It's a, um, a fusion between dye and pigment inks. So while I usually do not use 
dye inks on the gel printing plate because it forms, it beats up. And I know you can't see it, but if you try it at home, you will see what I mean. It gives these little beads. Uh, so you, ca you cannot get a um, really smooth print with it. Um, but you can help it along by rayering it out a little bit. And then you can, for instance, take another color. Okay, this was picked raspberry and this is plum. And then you can use your wood mounted stamp. So for, perhaps you will be able to see the bead uh, the beads now because it's not giving a clear image. And that's also um, something that that is um, normal for distress oxides. Um, I wouldn't use it for really intricate, uh, detailed uh, stamps, I would use it for, you know, less detailed stamped images. Um, this um, ink is part dye ink, and that means it doesn't dry on the plate. So I can take my time and I have some extra paper here on the side that I use to clean my brayer but that I can also use to keep my hands clean while I print. So there's my first print. And now you can see that um, at the part that I brayered, the pink part, uh, hardly has any beading, but um, you can see in the pinwheel um, that there are some splotches and that's because, yeah, the, the um, ink um, did that on the plate. Um, sometimes there's some ink left on the plate. It doesn't look like it right now, but we can try. Sometimes the ghost print is even better then the first print, see, there was ink on there, even though it didn't look like it. And that's why I usually cover the paper with an extra piece of paper. Okay, so it's very faint, but there's still something on there. So I'm going to show you a print I make, made earlier, where you can see some of the beading here. And this was the ghost print. And sometimes the, the ghost print is even, even better. So that's something you can try. So that's um, a wood mounted stem with distress ink. And then of course we have other types of um, uh, stems. Like for instance, these um, clear stamps. Again, this is not something I would use uh, together with paint, but you can uh, use clear stamps on the gel printing plate using uh, inks. Um, however, this is a great set to show you one of the cons of using normal stamps because these are numbers, right? and stamps are um, made in reverse so that when you stamp it on your paper, it's the right way around. But now we are going to take an extra step. Um, let me see, I'm going to use this. Mm, am I going to use this? Well, we are going to try. So this is the Versafine Claire. The color is summertime. So this is now um, the right way around if I stamp it on paper. Oh, no, it's not. How can that be? <laughs> okay, so this is a two. 
And this is a three. Um, how does that go? The three is this way. Interesting stamp set. It's it's um, a stamp set by Elizabeth Craft Design, and it's called Boxy Numbers. So there you go, thirty two. If I stamp this on the plate. It will be the right way on the plate, but if I take some paper, let's take this print that I took earlier. We have an extra step and the numbers are the wrong way around on the print. So that doesn't work. So any letter stamps or um, number stamps are not a great um, combo with the gel printing plate. However, normal stamps without uh, text or numbers, of course, the image will be reversed, but that's okay. Hey, Marsha, can I ask yeah. a quick question? Yeah. Somebody asked about, are Akua and Taglio inks okay with stamps? Um, oh, with stamps. They are okay with the gel printing plate. Um, that I know. Um, yeah, I think I, if I, you can use them with foam stamps, I think. That's something that I would do. Um, I'm not sure if I would use them with any of my wood mounted or other stamps, just to be sure, I haven't tried that. But with foam stamps, I, I absolutely, I think I, I can say that that's okay. Thanks. Of course, I'm going to try it now at home, right? And not for another time. Um, I have some other stamps here too. So what I said is I, I won't use my clear stamps with paints unless I don't care about them anymore and I don't want you to use them for stamping anymore, then I am okay with using paints and then I probably also won't clean them afterwards. So um, yeah, that's what you can do. But if you want to be able to stamp with them afterwards, then please don't use paint. Um, another type of stamp that you can buy in, are these um, cling rubber stamps. And these are by Carabella Studio. And they are designed by Birgit Koopsen, uh, which is another one of the, who is another one of the uh, JDR uh, brand ambassadors. And um, the thing about these stamps is they are rubber, uh, but they have a cling uh, backing. And sometimes I will use these with paint because um, it's okay if I don't let the paint dry on the stamp. And um, um right now i'm not going to use paint um or am i well let's do that i have some windsor and newton galleria permanent magenta here and i will roll some out on the plate with my brayer. And I roll the excess paint off on my paper here. And then what I can do is I can push this into the paint. And what I usually do is then I stamp it off. Um, and I can use this, I stamp this off and I don't give the paint a chance to dry on the stamp. 
I have a pen here with um, a, a dishcloth kind of thing. It's like a spongy type of uh, cloth with a lot of water. It's, it's really soaking in water. And I just put the stamp in there, let it sit there until I have time to clean it. Okay, so this is on my plate. And hopefully I didn't talk too long. And hey, Marcia, <laughs> yeah. you're asking for the color. You startled me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they want to know the color, the purple color. Oh, it, it was permanent magenta. Thanks. <laughs> it's a really pretty color. Okay. There we go. So that's how I would use a rubber stamp. Of course, you can also um, use it to stamp. And I actually did that beforehand. You can, um, with inks like, so I, the Versafine is a pigment ink. The, the Distress Oxide is a pigment ink too. You can you also use um, uh, dye inks, but they are not my favorites. Um, the other ones I use are uh, permanent inks, um, archival ink and stays on, for instance. Um, archival is oil-based and stays on is a solvent based ink. Um, um, you can use them on the plates um, like, oh, I can, sh well, will I show you? Yes, I can show you that. You can use it like this. And then, um, place a stamp in there, or in this case, I'm using an art printing plate, which is a special kind of stamp. And these are also designed um, by Bigot for Carabella Studio. And I hope this will turn out right, I'm not sure. Because there's a little bit much ink on there, but... Yeah, it's, there was a little bit too much ink on there, but you can see that you can get a really bright print um, with lots of detail. And what's special about these um, art printing plates is that it's the same material as the cling rubber stamps, but these are made for mono printing. So they made sure that um, the text is already um, reversed or actually not reversed, but it will be reversed on the plate. Um, oh, look, this one is what we can do too. Um, so that when you uh, printed it, it's the right way around. And um, perhaps you will be able to see it if I um, leave this to dry for maybe two minutes. It doesn't take really long, but it takes some time to dry before I can pull a ghost print. So before I can put paint on top, um, I want to clean this really quick because it stays on and it's a solvent based ink. So I don't want it to stay on my um, stamp or in this case, um, art printing plate too long. Um, so in the meanwhile, I, in the meantime, I also prepared another gel printing plate, also with stamps and stays on, but this one is, the ink is already dry. Um, and now I want to, am I going to take white? Yeah, I'm going to take white. 
This is mixing white, so it's a transparent white. And it's transparent, but it, I'm also using just a tiny bit so you are able to see everything through the paint. I'm going to place this on top. And I'm going to quickly use some paper. See what happens. Oh, very nice. So there you go. These are my stamps. Um, these are um, by Birgit, and this is a handmade stamp um, that I didn't show you yet. But I also have some hand carved stamps. Um, um, that I also don't use with paint, um, unless maybe it's this one, like a really simple design that I know I can make again, because um, I don't use them with paint because I want to make sure that I can clean them again afterwards. Um, they will probably be okay if you, um, again, put them in something wet so the paint can't dry. But just to be sure, I don't. Okay, so Marsha, yeah. now they want to hear how you made your own stamps. And yeah. somebody missed the transparent white. Can you just show us that again? Galleria acrylic mixing white. Thank you. But it's not about the brand. There's, there are lots of brands with uh, mixing whites. Yeah. Okay. So before I show you how to create, how, how I create my own stamps, I want to quickly show you this because you may have thought that there was some um, color on there already that I was going to pull off with the print, but it didn't. Um, some stamping inks stain your plates and um, this pink and this yellow was caused by archival ink. Um, so um, uh, yeah, some colors just do that. So that's something that you need to be mindful of when you use stamping inks on your plate. Paints don't usually stain the plates. I'm usually able to clean everything off, but um, yeah, this can't be cleaned off. I tried everything. Um, um, I, st I still might be able, to, so what I can do is I'm going to quickly uh, pull this print again with the mixing, oh, maybe I can do the mixing white and another color. This is rose pink and it's Liquitex Basics. If I can get the cap off, there we go. And then I'm going to quickly show you how I um, clean my plate after using a permanent ink. And it's also wise to do it after the stress oxides and the uh, versifying clair, because sometimes a little bit of the ink stays behind. Well, in this case, I pull it all off, but anyway. Look, how cool is that? And I don't know if you can see it, but the text is the right way around. So you can actually read it. So 
Um, what I use to clean um, stamping inks off the plate is baby oil. And mine is um, a vegetable oil, but um, yeah, there are mineral, um, there are baby oils with that um, have mineral oil as an ingredient. Um, both work, even olive oil works. I'm going to use a baby wipe. And then this will take all of the color off. And now it will be almost like new. This, ha this has had time to dry, so it, it takes a little bit of work. And then when you're done, I usually just do this. You can also rinse this under the, under the tap if you want to make sure that the oil um, is um, yeah dry or gone. And now if I do this on here, you will see that unfortunately the color will remain, um, but it doesn't affect um, any of the prints as you saw here. This is white, um, but I um, keep this one for when I want to play with alcohol inks, which, which can stay, stain the plate too, and um, inks. So that's what I use this plate for. Um, stamps, stamps. I have another type of stamp. And as you can see, I create a lot of them. Um, so these are my foam stamps. Um, um, I want to start with this quickly because I used this in a previous uh, Michael Zoom class. You can also um, buy the foam stickers at Michael's, the ones without the glitter. You need to, you need you don't need um, glitter on there, um, but you can use those to um, create your own stamps if you don't want to make your own. Um, I mean, design your own. Um, but I have all kinds here. Um, you can easily make, you can choose to make like shapes. Those are really easy. Or you can make, um, yeah, flowers or spooky ones like this one. Or I have some pumpkins here and this is another one with a pattern on there and you can what I use to uh, mount them on is a uh, thick uh, foam um, and it's at Michael's it's by Creatology um, but you can also if you don't have that you can use uh, you can st stick the foam to cardboard. I don't know if you can see that. And as you can see, sometimes I do not clean the stamps. If I um, know that I can make them uh, again easily, then sometimes I don't clean them. But it's, and of course, on cardboard, it's harder to clean. So that's why I prefer um, sticking them to the thick uh, foam and what I use is adhesive back foam that you can also um, buy at Michael's and um, you need scissors of course and if you want you can design something on the back like if I need a star, I usually create an outline on the back and then I cut it out.
Hey, Marsha, yes. while you're doing that, can you, yeah. somebody asked a question about extenders for the paint, not when the paint dries too quickly. Yeah. Can you talk about how they might use that? Um, yeah, so what I usually do is um, I uh, mix it in with my paint. I can show you um, in a minute. So I have a couple ones. Let me see. Yeah, this is the one that is easiest accessible right now. It's open acrylic medium that you can use as an extender. Um, there are also several um, uh, by different brands that are called retarders. Uh, by Liquid Liquitex, and there's also one by Golden, um, but I I don't see it where I can grab it, so I won't. Um, but what I do is I um, I will show you in a minute once I'm done with this with the stamps. Um, yeah, so there I have a shape, and then. I keep all of my scraps and I take off the packing and I look if there's a tiny corner where I can perhaps like this. And then I just stick it on. And what I usually do is I just cut it with a heavy duty scissors. So these will work, but just not as good as the heavy duty scissors, just because this is thicker, right? And then I just snip this off the excess. Um, you can also use a craft knife if you want that. You could, you could do that, that would work, but um, yeah, this is fairly, fairly quick. So I tend to use just a, a pair of scissors. I'm very sorry, my, the English is very hard today. No, I don't, I, you, no, 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 it's totally <laughs> fine. <laughs> I, I didn't tell you, but I'm Dutch. And um, so English is not my native tongue. Well, it's much better than my Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Which is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there we have the stamp. And you can also um, uh, um, stick some of the same uh, shape next to each other. And so and that way you can create a pattern. Um, I will print uh, one print first and then um, to show you how to use the extender and then I will show how I made this one and I will show how I made this one. Um, I'm going to use this stamp and I want to use another dark color so this is one of my favorites. It's Windsor and Newton Galleria, Prussian blue, Prussian, see English, very difficult. Prussian blue U. You don't need much paint. One drop will do. It could even be too much. Um, I'm looking for a really thin layer. Um, and I'm not um, brayering uh, back and forth. I'm um, rolling, lifting the brayer up, rolling, lifting the brayer up. And now I usually start here. And any extra paint here, I stamp off on the side. And of course you can use this later too.
Look at that. Okay, Marcia, See, this, could, could, this could be fun for the 4th of Ju July, right? Totally. Let's do the yeah. we'll save it for the 4th. Um, but somebody just asked. Oh, you... I forgot about the, the I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't worry. <laughs> I gave him the link. I already gave him the link for the Liquitex retarder. Um, oh, okay. So they're asking when you layer color on the plate, do you like to work dark to light or light to dark? Oh, yeah, well, there's something to say for both, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why limit yourself to just one way of doing it? Um, uh, but I have to be honest, I think I usually start with light and then, um, or yeah, light and then dark. But in later layers, it might be um, uh, more dramatic to add some more dark. So later on, if that makes sense. I don't know, but here's that print. And now I'm going to quickly show you how I do it with this. It's not needed, right? Because this is not drying very fast. But if you are in a dry climate, then um, this could be very helpful. So I usually just eyeball it. And um, oh, actually, this is a new. This isn't open yet. Take another one. And it's clogged. Yeah, I usually just put a tiny drop on there and then I kind of mix it. Like that. And then I roll it out. And as you can see, it also made the paint a little bit more transparent, just a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, what am I going to use now? Let's do this one. So I'm going to let this dry. And of course, this is going to take longer now because I used the, uh, the setting glazing liquid, but we are going to try anyway, see what, what happens. Um, and in the meantime, I can show you how I created this because this looks kind of um, difficult, right? Because how do you get the opening in the middle of the um, circles. But actually, I just did this. So I got some circles. And I'm all for wonky circles, so I do not care if they are not perfectly round. Um, see and what I did then is I just cut right through the circle and then I make sure that I um, align the cut with where I started. And then if I take, I don't know if this is going to fit. No, it's not. So we have this. And it usually is a good idea just to um, 
stick this piece onto the foam, the thicker foam you have. And then I just line that up um, like that. And then I can cut the foam, the thick foam. And then I usually don't um, try to make this base perfectly round. I just make sure that I don't have a lot of excess. Um, and what we can do, I don't know, is, will this be, no, it's not dry, it doesn't matter. Um, I can actually use this to create another layer. And as you can see, I'm stamping it off each time. And then, of course, I'm okay with paint drying on this because I know that I can make one again if I need to. But if you don't, if you'd like to have it clean afterwards, you should put it onto the sponge or um, throw it into a bucket of water until you have time to um, really clean this. So with the retarder in mixed through this paint, I'm going to try because I don't think it's going to dry. No, it's still wet. See, it's still wet, so it really works. Now I can just pull that print. Okay, there we go. Ooh, I like that. Very nice. Of course, this is this paint will take a little while to dry because of the retarder. So put this print in a safe place because it could still, um, like the other, without um, using the retarder, it's um, dry immediately, but this is still a bit tacky. Um, yeah. The spooky, the spooky um, um, stamp. How I did that is I use a ballpoint uh, pen and I use that to draw my ghost. Um, and I don't know if you, uh, you, this will be hard to see, but I push it into the foam quite hard to make a nice imprint and then and if the the pen runs out of ink like it it does right here it's it still works even without the ink, but I have another ballpoint pen. So I can draw in the eyes. And the mouth. See, this pen is also running out. Um, and then I will cut, uh, 
cut the ghost out along the outline or the outer line. You could also cut this freehand if you uh, if you want. I can imagine that one of these goats ghosts um, will turn out even better if you cut it freehand. So there we go. And then his mouth is, of course, a little bit harder to cut. So taking a cutting mat and a craft knife. And I just cut the mouth like this. See, and now I can just take that out. Oh, it's not a really smooth line, but I can always, now that this is open, I can always um, make it better with the scissors again. Um, this needs to go onto some thicker foam. This is too small. And I try not to waste any of the foam. So these pieces that I cut are going to go into my um, little um, tray of um, small parts. And then again, I do not try to make the base part Perfect. Hey, Marsha. Somebody's yeah. saying that they have a lot of non adhesive foam. And they're yeah. saying, what glue would you recommend to use? Ah, okay. So, um, my go to would be double sided adhesive tape. Um, and so I prepared one piece. So this is foam without adhesive backing. And I put some double-sided adhesive tape on the back. And then you can use it just like the adhesive back uh, foam. If you don't have um, this uh, kind of tape, that's not a problem. Um, then you can use, use like white glue. Um, PVA glue, and that works fine. Um, okay. Um, it it may be a little bit more um, work if you want to do the tiny, tiny, tiny pieces, but it works. Yeah. Okay. Then somebody asked, does your little ghost have their eyes cut out? No, yeah, yeah, and no. Um, what happens? What happens is I push into the foam really hard, and I don't know. You can't see that. So if I push into the foam really hard, it becomes a hole. So the foam in there isn't there. So in here, I didn't push that hard, but um, these eyes are hollow. Okay. In fact, we can, we can stamp it and then 
that you can see. And then they want the details of that double stick. Um, yeah, so have. this is Elizabeth Craft Designs um, clear double-sided ad adhesive tape, and it's available at Michael's online. Great, thanks. This is um, Liquitex Basics Acrylic Quinacridone Magenta. And let's get this out of the way. So we are going to have magenta ghosts. Or maybe... Oh. I've got some pieces of foam uh, stray pieces of foam on the gel plate, but we are going to go with it. So, oops. So, if the, <laughs> if you have difficulty getting um, the foam stamps off the plate, that happens to me too. Um, I had another one. Yeah, I do. I have a trick, but going to do this first. Mm. Okay, the design of this print is not going to be perfect, but okay. So I'm going to let this dry for a minute and I will show you what you can do. You can take a little bit of tape masking tape or washi tape or any cello tape or anything like that. And then you make a little loop and you place it on the back. And now you will have a little uh, thingy that you can use to pull the stamp off the plate without damaging or touching the paint, if that makes sense. So that's something which something you can do. Like, can you see that? Yeah, you can. And I also sometimes put something like a piece of cork on the back. You don't need to, but sometimes it can be handy. So again, this should be clean right away. So if you want to clean right away, a damp cloth usually does a trick. See, this is almost clean. If you don't let the paint dry on your stamps. Super easy. And then I also have a tea towel to just pat this dry a little bit. So I'm going to guess that this is dry. Oh no, it's not. Okay, then what else I can I show you? Like for these ones, I just drew the outline, but you can also give the stamp some detail. And you can even make something super detailed like this. So these, all these yellow lines, this is foam. All these yellow lines is where I drew with my ballpoint pen. I can show you on, well, this is not going to be a pumpkin, right? Let's try it. Make this into a pumpkin. So, oh. like, hmm. This is going to be a really interesting pumpkin, but okay. So you can draw on the foam 
just like on paper. So. It's usually more fun if you do it um, to relax, right? It's a, it's a nice meditative um, task. Yeah, these tiny bits like the little stalk, they can be um, difficult to cut and also they can fall off. But then you can usually um, stick them to the base. Let's see? And again, you can, if you don't have this type of uh, thicker foam, you can also use the thinner foam or just cardboard. I, th I think that even like a sturdy cardstock might work if it's a for a stamp that you only use once. So Marsha, it's getting really yeah. close. The time okay. now is three. Oh my <laughs> Okay, so there's the pumpkin. Um, I am going to use a pink and pull the sprint. I table is getting really messy so it's good that it's oh um this can happen i'm pulling off the paint with the uh dry brayer so if that happens to you what you can do is put the paint before before you <laughs> roll it on you can um make sure that the um, roller is covered with paint and then you can roll it on to the plate without pulling off the uh, previous layer. But it actually might be cool, this effect. What? Um, happened by accident. So are there any more questions that I can quickly answer? No, okay, good. I hope everyone had a good time. And there's the prints. Okay, that could have gone better, but still look, I love that. Yeah. So cool. Then I'm ready to wrap up. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you had a good time. Um, before I leave, I'm going to tell you about two, um, two Michael Zoom classes with Jelly Arts that are coming up. The first one uh, that is coming up is on November 5th and it's a card making class with Birgit Koopsen and it's making cards with a gift ornament and they look really cool so you don't want to miss that and then uh, the class after that is on November 9th this, so that's really quick after um, that and that one is taught by Tanya um, and she will be making Christmas cards so again that's one you don't want to miss um, yeah, if you um, want to know any of uh, the events like Facebook Lives that we are um, 
organizing, you should uh, go to uh, jellyartsblog.com and then tap on the events page and all the dates uh, are there. And um, yeah, that's it for me. So um, until next time, bye.